Christ. Nah. <laughs> Get them when you're ready. Hey guys, welcome to Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'm Jeremy Yoder, and today I'm at the Barbecue HQ, and we're going to examine the question, how do I choose a smoker? If you've watched these videos before, welcome back. If this is your first time, welcome. If you have any questions while you're watching the video, you can leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to get to them. Also, you can subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get informed every time I put out new informative barbecue content. Now, the three things that we have to consider when choosing a barbecue smoker are, number one, what is your budget? Because if this is wrong, then the other two points don't matter. The second thing is what kind of cooker do you want to use? And the third thing you're looking at is how much capacity does that smoker have? Does it fit your needs? For point number one, budget. This is the most important thing to consider. As with many other things in life, with smokers, you get what you pay for. So if you spend a little bit of money, you're not going to get a whole lot of quality, usually. Now there are some bargains out there, there are some deals, there are some things that are overpriced, but the general rule is true. If you spend good money on a barbecue, you will get good quality for your money. So we're gonna break this down into three groups. So we have below $500, $500 to $1,500, and $1,500 and above. I think those are probably pretty good gauges of how much people are willing to spend. And we're gonna to try to give you multiple examples of smokers in each price range. The second thing to consider is what kind of smoker you want to use. There are some that are very labor intensive, like offset smokers, and then some that are mostly hands off, like pellet smokers, and there are gradations in between. So we're gonna take a look at several different kinds here and talk about the merits of each kind, and hopefully after that, you'll get a good idea of which kind of pit you want. Now one note, Smokers can be referred to by many different names. You can call it a pit, you can call it a cooker, you can call it a smoker, you can call it a barbecue. A lot of different names. We're talking about the same thing. If you're using it for low and slow cooking meat, that is a barbecue, it's a smoker, it's all the same thing for what we're talking about today for our purposes. And then the final thing we want to examine is capacity. Now, I have a rule of thumb when people ask me about what smoker they should buy. I always ask them, what's the maximum number of people you think you'll ever have to cook for? and they'll tell me a number, say, 30. I always tell them, double it and get a smoker that's that size. Because invariably, I have people saying, oh, hey, uh, I'm trying to cook for this many people, but my smoker will only cook for half that amount. What do I do? That happens all the time. So if you get a smoker that's twice the size of what you think you need, you'll be able to deal with any kind of situation that could potentially come up. Now we're ready to look at some of the smokers, and we're going to start with our $500 and below budget range. The first smoker that we're gonna look at that's under $500 is this Green Mountain Grills Daniel Boone. Arvin, the manager here at the Barbecue HQ, actually owns one, so he's gonna talk us through some of the details. But first, I just wanna talk about pellet smokers in general really briefly. So pellet smokers are an incredibly convenient way to do barbecue. You fill up the hopper with pellets, you turn it on, you set the temperature, and you can walk away for a long time and it will run on its own. You can get pellets at a lot of different places. And for a lot of people, the right answer for what kind of smoker you should get is a pellet smoker. And so Arvin, can you talk us through this smoker in particular? What's the price of the smoker? How much can you fit on it? And what's your experience with it? So here we have the Daniel Boone Choice oh. model. It retails for $4.99. I don't have this exact model. I have their prime version, uh, but you can fit. I mean, I've cooked briskets, I've cooked pulled pork, uh, chicken, hamburgers, yep. you know, sausages, baked zucchini bread in there, I've uh, done pizzas, especially you could add their pizza attachment. There's also other companies out there that have like, GMG has their second rack, and then there's other companies that have like a fuller rack that you could add, that gives you more space. So you can even double up their load. You could do almost, I would say even with the second rack, you could do about three or four briskets. Okay, um, well, that's I've, a I've had it where I've had to uh, turn two briskets sideways and gotten two briskets in there. Mm -hmm. um, so this thing is, it cooks, I mean, great barbecue for a pellet grill and for a price range at $4.99. One more thing, how many pounds of pellets can you fit into this hopper? Uh, this, this hopper holds 20 pounds of pellets. And how long does that usually last if you're cooking at, say, 225? Uh, there's a lot of variances that you have to throw in a mm -hmm. factor because you got your temperature outside, yeah. uh, you know, what you're cooking. So it, it could range anywhere from, you know, if you're cooking at 225, maybe 10 to... 18 hours uh, just depending on you know all those factors right. and uh, uh, you know that's the biggest thing I get that question a lot and it's right. kind of hard because you know if it's a hundred degrees out yeah then you're gonna use a lot less pellets if it's 
50 degrees out, you're going to be burning a lot more to keep that sure. temperature up. Sure. So, do you think you could cook a whole brisket with one hopper full? Uh, no, you, you would have to like okay. fill up. You know, that's usually what I do. I'm very, you know, on it, and I, I hate to worry about it. So I always top every time off. I always top it off. Every time yeah. I check, I always top it off. You know, okay. it's just a habit I have. Yeah, but you can definitely do ribs. You can definitely do chicken. A bunch of stuff you can cook for quite a while with just one hot before. Yes, exactly. So you're not going to have to be you know waiting around like checking it every ten minutes. It'll go no. for a long time. Yeah. Okay. So that adds to the convenience factor, and that's one of the many reasons why pellet smokers are so popular. Next, we're going to look at the Weber Smoky Mountain. This is a very, very common smoker out there. Lots of people have them and get great success with them. So there are some benefits to using something like this over a pellet smoker. So pellet smokers have to be plugged into work. This doesn't have to have any wires going to it. So if you're in a really remote location, you can use this where you might not be able to use a pellet smoker. Also, moving this thing is going to be lighter and easier than trying to drag around a pellet smoker somewhere. And then finally, this thing has a built-in water pan that makes it really easy to keep a good level of moisture in the cook chamber. Basically, this big one, this 22-inch model, is $439 here at the Barbecue HQ, and you have two nice big racks underneath this lid so you can fit even the beefiest of briskets, no pun intended, the biggest briskets. You could cook 20-pounders in here, and there's another rack underneath so you could do two 20 pound briskets and fit some other things on the side if you wanted to. Below that is the water pan and then below that is where the charcoal and wood chunks go. So you put in your charcoal and wood chunks at the lowest layer, you light those, then you use the vent on the top and the vents on the bottom to dial in the temperature to just what you want. And then once it's dialed in, it will continue to stay at that temperature for a long, long time. This is a very convenient way to get real barbecue and it doesn't take up too big of a footprint in terms of how much floor space it takes up, but you get a lot of cooking space. Those are some of the reasons people really love these things. One other feature that I wanted to mention that's really well thought out is you can actually, through this door, add fuel during the middle of the cook. So you don't have to pull all your meat out and go through a huge hassle. You open the door, you throw in some charcoal, you throw in some wood chunks if you want to add more wood for more flavor, and then you close it back up and you're ready to cruise for another, I don't know, eight, 10 hours. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't mention a Weber kettle. I bet that probably more briskets have been cooked on Weber kettles than any other kind of backyard smoker. Now, Weber kettles are extremely versatile. You can use them to grill, you can use them to slow smoke. You can do a ton of things with Weber kettles, but they're not really designed to be used for smoking alone. Therefore, it's not an ideally suited smoker. So you can use it for smoking, but if you're in the market for something that's just gonna be used for slow smoking meat, I would suggest using other avenues instead, like the Smoky Mountain or a pellet smoker or a pit barrel cooker, something like that that's designed exclusively for smoking because I think you're gonna get better results. Now, if you just have one of these, you can absolutely smoke great quality stuff on it. It's just gonna be easier with other cookers, at least in my opinion. And then for the record, the price on this guy today is $329 to give you an idea of how this compares to the other smokers we've just seen. Right, the last pit in our below $500 section is gonna be the pit barrel cooker. So essentially, it's a barrel, and you put coals at the bottom, wood chunks at the bottom, and then there are these pieces of rebar that you see right here that run through, and then also these serve as air vents, these holes. So it's already kind of all calculated, so you don't actually have to do any adjusting. It will, on its own, run at a correct temperature to cook barbecue. Also, from this rebar, they have hooks that you can use to hang meat. And then also, if you don't want to do that, you can actually place meat on a grate directly below the rebar and you can cook things that really wouldn't do well hanging up so much. This is a very, very easy and convenient way to do barbecue. And also, because you're hanging the meat directly above the coals, the rendered fat and things like that will drip down out of the coals and give it extra flavor, uh, more of a kind of a grilled flavor than you would get necessarily on other cookers. And this is on sale here today for $350. There's also a Pit Barrel Junior, and I believe that's $229. I'm not 100% sure on that, but an inexpensive way to get real barbecue and a very convenient way to do it. Right now we're moving on to $500 to $1,500 budget range. And this is gonna be our first offset smoker. And you may have noticed that I didn't include any offset smokers in the $500 and below budget range. Let me explain why. 
when you get an offset smoker, there's some things that are very important. One of those things is the thickness of the metal itself. And $500 and below is gonna be extremely difficult to find a smoker that's got thick enough metal to work well. Now, you could get something like an Oklahoma Joe and use it and it's possible to create great barbecue with it. The only thing is, it's very, very difficult to do. So, if you're somebody out there who's making great Q on an Oklahoma Joe, I salute you, well done. Just for the majority of people, it's so difficult to maintain a consistent temperature and to burn a clean fire that they end up ruining tons of meat, not through any fault of their own necessarily, but just because the smoker is so hard to work with. When you get to higher price ranges where they start to use thicker metal and there's you know, greater care in construction, offset smokers become a great choice because, simply put, nothing replaces the flavor you get from a real wood fire. Now you can get great barbecue on a lot of smokers, but offset smokers simply produce the best quality flavor. But they're also the most inconvenient to use. You have to be checking the fire, you have to be moving it around, you have to be adding wood all the time. And just ask yourself this question. Why would people go through all that hassle in using an offset smoker? The answer is very simple, because it produces the best possible flavor. That's why people go through all the trouble. Now, when you get to something that's well constructed, sky's the limit to how good your barbecue can be. But the cheaper stuff, it's really, I encourage people not to get them. I would say spend your money elsewhere. You're gonna have more success with other kinds of cookers at that price point. Now, moving on to this one. This is the Meadow Creek SQ36. I've cooked on one of these quite a few times now. And for the price, it is very, very good. Some other things I wanna mention first, the Old Country Barbecue Pits Brazos that I've used in a ton of videos. I love that thing, that's $1,000. It's still in the same price point. Uh, I'll include a link to my full review of that smoker and why I like it. But let's talk about this one now. This is really, really, really superb because it has a baffle plate that evens out the temperature across the whole surface of the cooker. It's got this second rack that you can include. You have a lot of space, you could do probably one, two, three briskets and a couple pork butts on this thing. And it is very solidly constructed. Now, I'll be the first to admit, it's not the prettiest smoker I've ever seen, but I don't really care about that. I care about how it cooks. This thing is an absolute champ. Uh, you know, it's not the thickest smoker in the world, but it's at that level of thickness that you can start to produce great offset barbecue. One other note, if you saw my video on the Wagyu beef belly burn ends, we cooked it on one of these smokers. I've used it quite a few times in the past for different purposes, and I recommend it. If you wanna spend 1,460 bucks, this is a great way to do it. This smoker is widely available. It's made by Meadow Creek, by the uh, Amish in Pennsylvania, and uh, just a great choice for an entry-level offset smoker. There are other options, of course. There are Yoders, there are Horizons, there are a bunch of offset smokers out there, but to me, I think once you get to quality, there's not a big gradation until you get to custom. So there's a threshold below which you don't want to buy an offset smoker because they're junk. And then you have good, and then you have really good when you go to custom, very expensive levels. This to me, somewhere between this and the old country Brazos, I think those are, you know, a perfect place to get into offset smoking. Next up, we have our first pellet grill between $500 and $1,500. So for $8.99, we have this Green Mountain Grills. And it's not only bigger, so you have more capacity in terms of how much you can cook, but it's got some additional features. And so to explain some of those, we have Arvin to give us the lowdown. So what makes this one different than the basic model? Okay, so this one is the prime version of the Green Mountain Grills. Uh, and this is the Jim Bowie. Uh, so in here, we have our custom grates sold separately but you just got more cooking space. With the prime models, you have this, uh, the window, which is a nice added feature. You can actually look in and see the food cooking. Right. Uh, so you don't have to open it, lose heat, yeah. close it back down. Okay. Yeah, so you can take a look through. Yeah. Um, and then the prime version also comes with a uh, front shelf, as well as a window in the hopper. So now you can see that level of pellets in there. Uh, and it also has Wi-Fi. Oh, so, it's, so you can, interact with it with your phone and stuff? Yes, correct. Change temperature and stuff like that yes, too? Yeah, you sure can, and uh, in turn on and off. Wow, okay, so you could be sitting on your couch in front of your TV, and you could look out here, see that you're, you know, you have enough pellets or you might be running out, you can change the temperature, you can turn it off, all from, you know, your phone? Yes. Okay, all right, well, that's pretty cool. Now, my, uh, my big 500 gallon smoker, I can't do any of those things, it's, it's way more of a pain in the butt to deal with that one. So. 
That's nice to know. And so what do you think for capacity we could we could fit in here? I'm, I'm thinking we could do one, two, at least three briskets on the bottom and a couple more on the top. What, five, six briskets in there? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, with our with the, the custom grates that we make, definitely. Uh, normally it would come uh, without this top rack and it'd be a little bit different uh, grates, but you could get three um, briskets on there, no, no problem. Okay, wow, great. All right, now let's move on. All right, I know this is a big scenery change, but here I am at my place and I want to mention this smoker in that $500 to $1,500 range. I believe this one sells for $12.99 on Academy Sports. And for a lot of people, this is a great option. I'm not gonna belabor a bunch of points, but if you're interested in this smoker, I will link a video where I break down how the smoker works and give you kind of a tour of the smoker. But let me give you a simple abbreviated version. Basically, this is a gravity fed smoker. You feed charcoal into the chute, so you, you fill it up. And if you fill up a full chute, it can last for 12 to 15 hours. You put wood chunks underneath and you have the main cook chamber right here. And it's got a lot of space. You could easily do six briskets. You could do a ton of food in there and it doesn't have too big of a footprint. Also, it's insulated, which means that even if it's cold, if it's windy, this smoker will still work and not give you problems with great heat fluctuations. Also, you can add something like Barbecue Guru or another fan system that monitors the temperature inside and then regulates air coming in so you have a perfectly regulated temperature for as long as you want it. Now, that's enough for this for now. If you're really interested in this, um, I'll link some videos below. It's got tremendous flavor. And when I do the recap of everything, I'll give you a little bit more information about my opinion on this smoker. Okay, now we are moving on to $1,500 and above. At this point, you're shelling out serious money and hopefully you have a serious pit to cook your barbecue. First one we're gonna look at is this Kamado Joe. It's a ceramic cooker, so it's a Japanese-inspired cooking style. And this one is about 1,900 bucks. And what you get with this is coals on the bottom, you can add in wood chunks, you can use it for grilling, you can use it for a wide variety of purposes. Uh, much like the Weber kettle, this thing can do a lot of different things. And of course, it can't do anything perfectly, but it does a lot of things extraordinarily well. And you also have the benefit of a million aftermarket gizmos and gadgets to use for specific purposes. So you wanna do direct coal grilling, you can get a rotisserie and install it here and get great stuff. I've had great results in the past with that. You can get uh, gadgets that separate your charcoal to one side or the other so you have better indirect cooking for low and slow barbecue. You can fire this thing up to get to 700 degrees, no problem if you wanna sear the heck out of a steak. This thing can do a lot of different things extremely well, but it's not a dedicated smoker. But for a lot of people, this makes the most sense. Rather than investing a bunch of money in a great grill, and then a bunch of money in a great smoker, they can have something that can do both. And so let's open this up. And here you see, this is the grate, and it's actually pretty big. You could fit two briskets on there. I've cooked briskets on Kamados before, and just as long as you include enough wood chunks, you can get good smoke flavor. And typically, when you dial in the vent on the bottom and the vent on the top, it will hold temperature steady pretty well. But this, I would pay attention to, because it's ceramic, it retains heat super well. So it can get kind of a runaway effect. You might walk away for an hour, and if you're not used to this thing, it might climb another 100 degrees if you're unprepared for it. So just keep an eye on it until you've got the pit mastered. One other benefit of this is that because it's ceramic and retains heat so incredibly well, you could use this thing in sub-zero temperatures and still sear steaks at over 700 degrees. It's very good for that. Also, if you're in windy conditions, you're still gonna have no problem maintaining temperature in this beast. One downside because of the ceramic is it's pretty darn heavy. It's not easy to move around with one person. It's on rollers, you can move it around, but you can't just pick it up and carry it and put it in your truck. It's not that kind of smoker. Next, we have the Pits and Spits Maverick 1250. Now, I have one of these, and first let me say, I really, really, really like it. On days when I want barbecue, but I don't have time to sit out and manage a fire, you know, for 12, 14, 16 hours, I can put it on here and get something that I still really enjoy, but I hit the power button, I walk away, I come back eight hours later, I wrap, I walk away, I come back four hours later, and it's done. So this thing, incredibly convenient. Also, it's built like a tank. Um, just funny story about that. I actually had mine on my truck. I was bringing it home from the store, and I decided I thought it would be a good idea to try to unload it myself. 
stupid idea. Uh, basically what happened is I was trying to take it off the truck and it just fell and crashed and rolled and I thought oh man there goes you know this $2,500 pit down the tubes but I set it upright and I realized there's nothing there's nothing wrong except the only thing that was damaged was this little cover for the smokestack so I called pits and spits they sent me another one I put it on and not a single problem using this pit. Uh, it's been absolutely beautiful. Also, it's a tank because it's made out of pretty thick steel in comparison to most pellet smokers. So it really retains heat extremely well. And side benefit, even though this is made out of thick steel, the lid is very easy for anybody to open. So it slides. Rather than having to lift up you know, 50 pounds worth of metal, you can just slide it up and down um, you know, on a lot of offset smokers in particular, it can be really difficult to lift up the lid for a lot of people. This one slides smooth as glass, boom, open and shut. Really, really great cooker. Now, another thing that's awesome about this beast is that the hopper holds 35 pounds of pellets. So you can use, you know, one hopper full of pellets to do an entire brisket cook and not even have to worry about running out. So you start it at the beginning with a full hopper of pellets, you're good to go. Also, in terms of capacity, this thing is great. You can cook six briskets on here and it's not even really breaking a sweat. And then also because it has the diffuser plate in there, it kind of has an even cooking temperature. You're not gonna burn anything anywhere on the smoker because the heat is nice and evenly distributed. There aren't really hot spots. And then finally, there's some cool accessories that you can use with this thing. So it's not just a smoker. That's what it's best at, but it can also be used to grill directly. So you can remove one baffle plate and then there's another baffle plate you can put in with a trap door. So you can actually have it directly over the fire pot. And so you can use that to sear steaks. So you could do a reverse sear, put it in there, let it go at, you know, say 225 degrees until you reach an internal temperature, say 125 that you want. You pull it off, you open that trap door, you turn this thing up to 600 degrees and you sear the heck out of those steaks and have tremendous flavor on the exterior. Needless to say, I really love this thing and I know it's a lot of money, but I don't regret getting this thing at all. The final smoker I'm gonna mention in the $1,500 plus range is this. This is a custom smoker um, that I ordered and simply put, I absolutely love this thing. The best barbecue I've ever made in my entire life has come off of this, uh, and it's not even close. Essentially, it's just the same basic design as a regular backyard offset smoker, except it's gonna be made from an old propane tank, which means it's already the right shape. It's minimum quarter inch thick steel, um, and the end caps, I think, are beneficial. On the firebox side, it seems that the heat goes up and then curls into the end cap so that you don't have you know, a crazy hot spot right next to the firebox. And then this end cap seems to kind of help collect the smoke and heat and direct it toward the stack. Another benefit of doing something like this is tremendous capacity. Um, I've cooked as much as 350 pounds of brisket on this thing at one time. You can cook a lot of food. And then finally, in terms of flavor, there's nothing like a real wood fire. And then also there's nothing like the fire that you can create in a smoker like this. If you have a big pit, you know, 250, 500, 1,000 gallons, the amount of smoke flavor that you generate from your fire is gonna be superior to everything else out there. So there are two reasons why top barbecue spots use an offset smoker. And it isn't because it's convenient, because it's not convenient. The two reasons are, number one, you can build them big and have a lot of capacity. And number two, and in my opinion, the most important reason is because you can't recreate that kind of smoke flavor any other way. So if you wanted something like this, you're probably looking to spend in the neighborhood of $10,000. Uh, there are other custom backyard size smokers out there. For me, that didn't really seem to make sense for you know where I was and what I was doing. I had a good backyard offset smoker that I loved. I mean, I mean, I still have. It's, it's a great pit. I love cooking on it. It's just when my needs outgrew the backyard size, I went with something like this. Because the difference that you get in a backyard smoker, an offset that is, that's very good, and one that's custom, is simply you get things put together the way you want to. And if it's already put together the way you want to, and you don't want to make major changes, then I think you're better off getting a good quality, standard, regular backyard pit. Now, 
this thing, I got to choose whatever I wanted. I got to choose the height of the smokestack. I got to choose whether I had reverse flow or standard flow. I got to choose how many thermometers I had. I got to choose, you know, the width of the trailer. I got to choose that there's a wood rack on the backside where I can fit, you know, a quarter of a cord of wood. All those things make a custom smoker unique um, to your needs and your preferences. And that's why I think it's one of those things that's worth the money if you have the money and you have the need. To put it in perspective what you're able to do with a smoker like this, I once had an event where I had to feed 800 people and I cooked everything on this smoker. Now, it wasn't easy. Basically, it was 24 hours of continuous cooking as the first things came off, new meat went on and you know it was a labor intensive and time intensive process, but it was capable of producing that much food and we didn't even run short, we actually had some extra. So this thing is just, I would call it a tank, but it's obviously already a tank, but it's just a powerhouse and it does everything I want it to do. One other thing about 500 gallon offsets is that to me, they're the perfect marriage of large size and controllability. Usually with a thousand gallon pit, you know, it's, it's harder to, if you want to jump the temperature, 40 degrees, 50 degrees, you really have to work at it for a while. This thing, it's pretty rapid. If you want to cool down the temperature, you can do it pretty rapidly on this too, but it's still large enough to cook a big, big quantity of meat. So for me and my purposes, this was the perfect size and uh, I just love this thing. So let's wrap up what we've seen here, okay? This is my opinion. There are plenty of people out there who are more than happy to disagree with me and I don't hold anything against them. This is just my opinion from my experience. When we're talking about smokers, on the one side, in terms of flavor, we have offsets that, in my opinion, produce the best flavor, and they are simply kind of the, the pinnacle of what you can create in barbecue. Then, on the other end of the spectrum, we have something that's super easy, uh, but just doesn't produce as much flavor. That would be a pellet smoker. So, offsets, great flavor, a lot of work. Pellet smokers, good flavor, almost no work. And then the other smokers fall somewhere in between. And where they fall in between is just a matter of personal taste and personal preference. I think the gravity fed smoker is the closest I've come to getting offset type flavor, but there's still definitely a difference. Um, things like uh, Weber Smoky Mountain or Weber Kettle or Kamado Joe, they seem to have a touch more smoke flavor than a pellet smoker. Sometimes, maybe, it all just depends. Basically, if you cook your barbecue really well on any of those other pits, you can still get great stuff. You just won't have the depth of smoke flavor that you get with an offset. Now, let me cut to the bottom line here. What are my recommendations for each price point? $500 and under. I would say get a pellet smoker. They aren't, you know, super fancy or anything like that, but you're more likely to produce good barbecue on one of those pellet smokers than on any of the other kinds of smokers. 500 to 1500 my recommendation is gonna be in two parts. If you like playing with the fire, you like staying out there and babysitting it, and you want to invest a ton of time into barbecue, get an offset. My recommendation would be the Old Country Barbecue Pits Brazos. It's, you know, $1,000, and it's just a great little pit. I love mine, I'm gonna keep that thing forever. If you don't wanna do that, my recommendation would be to get a larger pellet grill. Pellet grills are just so incredibly convenient that to me, somewhere in between, you know, it might make sense for you if you wanna be somewhat involved, but not super involved. But that's where I would steer most people to because the people who are gonna be somewhat involved, if you really love barbecue, you love the process, eventually you're gonna to wanna to have complete control over everything, you know, like an offset. If you just want barbecue and you don't wanna to have to do a bunch of fiddling with stuff and playing with a fire and, you know, torture yourself, get a pellet smoker. And there are decent pellet smokers in that price range. And finally, the $1,500 and above. If you have a major capacity need, I would say, get a large offset. If you want to produce the absolute best tasting smoke flavor possible on your meat, get a large offset. If you want to have something that's just really, really nice and you can rely on it and you don't have to mess with it, I would say get a high quality pellet smoker. I love the Pits and Spits Maverick 1250. You know, there are other great pellet smokers out there, particularly the Yoder pellet smokers are, are really good. I've messed around with them before. I really like them. I don't like them as much as the Pits and Spits, but something that's well-made and is gonna last a long time is what you want to invest that kind of money in. So 
if somebody comes to me and says, I have a budget of $1,000 for a smoker, what should I get? And I'd say Old Country Brazos. Unless you don't want to manage the fire, then get a pellet smoker. That's the bottom line of how most of these recommendations go. Thank you for watching Mad Scientist Barbecue. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel and make sure to hit that notification bell so you get notified whenever I put out new barbecue content. Also, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'll see you guys next time. You can do a ton of things with Weber, okay. Also, you can actually add something like a barbecue gu, okay. Also, you can add something like a barbecue gu, I want to say guru, okay. Also, you can add something like a barbecue bar, oh my goodness barbecue guru. If you're using it for low in smoke, oh, wow, I said low in smoke. In sub-zero temperatures and still fear safe. Okay, hold on. Done.